Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile found... From the studios of Blackwater Media in the city of Atlanta, it's time for the Shadowland Radio Show. I'm your host, Dr. William Lester. On this edition of the show, just in time for Halloween, Paranormal Georgia. Back in the 1800s, somewhere in Georgia, a poor farmer and his family were expecting their fifth child. The husband knew that they couldn't feed another mouth, so he and the doctor arranged for the baby to be done away with immediately after birth. After the birth of the baby, the doctor took the child and dropped it over a bridge. Today, if you drive to that same bridge on a cloudless night with a full moon and sprinkle baby powder around your car, turn your engine and lights off for about 10 minutes, you'll hear a baby crying and see baby footprints in the baby powder. A young man visited Fort Mountain in Georgia and asked his friend to take a picture of him. Legend has it that the friend took the picture, screamed, and fainted, then died two days later in the hospital. The picture revealed the photo of a ghostly woman next to the boy. Once the haunted pillar in Augusta, Georgia sat in the middle of an Augusta market. An evangelist wanted to preach next to the pillar. When he was not permitted to do so because of the authorities, he put a curse on the town, saying everything would be blown away except for the pillar. A freak tornado flew through the market and tore down everything but the pillar. Accounts going back to the 1960s shows that everyone who tries to move the pillar is killed. In 1840, a slave owner went to attack a slave named Ellick in his quarters. The slave owner fell off a ladder and impaled himself on a sword. Ellick was falsely accused of his murder and was sentenced to death. Ellick was chained by his ankles and wrists to the floor of his cell right before his hanging. It is said that people can still feel his presence and sometimes can hear Ellick's sad song. In 1946, the Ellis Hotel on Peachtree Street in Atlanta was the Weinkauf Hotel. A fire took place at this hotel which took 119 lives. Some people were so desperate to escape they jumped to their deaths, throwing their children before them. The disaster was nicknamed the Titanic on Peachtree. It is rumored a local criminal nicknamed the Candyman set fire to the hotel. Employees in the Ellis Hotel report seeing ghosts, missing tools, and for two weeks straight, the fire alarm went off at 2.48 a.m. every night, which was right before the deadly fire took place.
The Kennesaw House is located in Marietta, Georgia, and once served as a military hospital for Confederate soldiers during the Civil War. This house has seen gruesome days with amputated limbs stacked up outside of the windows. Ghost hunters and paranormal researchers have claimed there being more than 700 spirits at this house. Georgia is a beautiful state and it is outrageously haunted. Savannah, for example, is known to be littered with paranormal activity. Many say that once you visit Savannah, you will always want to return as if something beyond the grave is calling and entrancing you. One of the most frightening ghost stories from this state is also quite true. It's called the Surrency Ghost and it gets its title from its setting in the town of Surrency, Georgia and from the family involved for who the town is named. Going back to the 1800s, before Surrency was established, there was a family who owned a farm on the edge of the town. That family was known as the Surrencies. They were a pretty normal family for that time. However, they did tend to have a little more wealth and influence than many others in that area. Mr. Surrency owned one farm and another home in a different town. But their Surrency home and farm were the ones that they loved. Unfortunately, things at their beloved home took an unexpected turn for the worse. Weird things started happening around their house, including windows slamming shut and flying open right in front of their very eyes without any explanations whatsoever. Doors would also slam shut and then open without any explanations. But these were soon to be mild occurrences compared to the horrors to come. More terrifying things started to happen around their house, including objects constantly flying off of shelves. The trusty old clock began to strike 13, and the clock hands would wildly spin out of control. Evil red eyes appeared on their property around the house at night, and meal after meal would be thrown into their very laps at the dinner table. It was as if there were dozens of ghosts in their home that headed out for them, revenge for some unknown an unseen reason. There were whispers in the town that Mr. Surrency himself was in league with the devil. And while this could never be substantiated, it did not stop people from speculating on the cause of the paranormal activity. As time wore on, the ghosts became more and more outrageous and violent. They targeted the little girl with the most violent of attacks, including pulling her hair, snatching the blankets from her bed at night, lifting her right out of her own bed and turning her bed sideways with a slam. This was, it seemed, the last straw. The family finally decided to move from the Surrency farm. The Surrency family ended up moving. They still experienced hauntings, but not as badly as on the farm. The house actually ended up burning down in 1925, having been abandoned for years. The locals would still visit, and there were even train rides to attract tourists to the area. Dozens of books were written over the years about the haunting, and most have been now forgotten. By no means are the Surrency ghosts the only supernatural phenomena associated with this area. There is the famous Surrency Spook Light. Since the early years of the last century, this phantom light has appeared over the train tracks of the vicinity. The strange light always vanishes when approached. Although theories abound, there is as yet no reliable evidence as to the cause or origin of this manifestation. And that concludes another edition of the Shadowland Radio Show. Thank you for listening to the program. I'd like to remind you that the show can be heard on the Blackwater Media YouTube channel, the CryptoReality.us Facebook page, the Agenda Earth Facebook page, the Shadowland Radio Show Facebook page, and Google+. I'm Dr. William Lester, and I promise that I'll see each and every one of you again on the flip side.